Hello, everyone. My name is Colby Moorberg. I am an assistant professor of soil science in the Kansas State University Department of Agronomy, and I am presenting an open annotated bibliography case study. Uh, this case study was recently published in the journal Natural Sciences Education, and today I will walk you through that case, uh, the decision that was made, uh, developing this textbook, teaching notes, and ultimately discussion and conclusions. Uh, the, the course that I teach is Agron 635, Soil and Water Conservation. This is an upper level undergraduate, lower level graduate course. Uh, what I found is in previous semesters where there was a, requ a required textbook that you see on the right, uh, students were buying the textbook, but they just weren't reading the content or they weren't reading the assigned readings from the book. Uh, so I was looking for a different option for reading materials for this class that the students would actually read. And I also wanted to do it in a way that where I could flip the classroom and make it more a discussion based focus, a, a discussion focused class based on those assigned readings. So I began to look at my options within the textbooks that exist. What I found is that uh, the other two textbooks, uh, besides the one that we had required previously, uh, they just didn't quite fit the bill for the content that they included uh, or their price. And ultimately, I went with option four, which was to develop a collection of free online resources. Uh, so these these online resources, uh, they uh, this this collection primarily included extension publications, uh, but it also included government publications, reports, fact sheets, NGO publications, and other resources. Uh, extension publications, like you see on the right, are are documents that are that are created by the extension programs of land grant universities around the U.S. and they uh, often are uh, relatively short in length, five to ten pages at most. They're written for a general audience, they're very easy to read, and they're written by experts in that particular field. So they make for great short reading assignments uh, for students. So that was uh, sort of the target type of resource that we're looking for uh, in developing this collection. Ultimately, what we developed this collection and, and curated it into an open annotated bibliography. In this case, uh, we titled it Soil and Water Conservation and Annotated Bibliography. Uh, this was published by New Prairie Press in December of 2019. Uh, we had 25 uh, collaborators and chapter co-authors, uh, 20 of which I'm happy to say were my students. We published it with a CC BY license, and uh, it, it follows a traditional textbook organization with 13 chapters, uh, each of those uh, divided into different sections. And all in all, we cited over 700 different resources, uh, each accompanied with a brief annotation that provides some context uh, to our readers. Uh, the steps that we took to develop this, the first one was to identify the audiences. The primary audience was students in my class and similar courses around the US. Uh, the secondary audience included farmers, ranchers, soil conservationists, and other professionals related to soil and water conservation. Uh, the next step was to uh, create a chapter and section outline that would identify the content that was going to be included, at least in the first edition of this textbook. And the next step was to create a, a guide to authors because I knew this was going to be a, a collaborative effort and I wanted to maintain a consistent voice across all of those 25 collaborators. Uh, the next step was to recruit those, uh, those, con those contributors to the book. And I did that through Twitter. And I also recruited students within my own course uh, to help contribute to this textbook as well. Uh, we used Google uh, Drive and, and Google Docs to create the content and write each of these chapters. We used Slack to facilitate communication, and we used Zotero uh, to manage all these hundreds of citations. Uh, the next step was to go out and, uh, and find these resources, write the annotations, and, and, and add them to, uh, to our book. Uh, so we were looking for resources that were free and accessible, concise, credible, current, of good quality, and when possible, openly licensed. Uh, you can see what this textbook ended up looking like on the right side. Uh, we had uh, photos that we added to this, most of which were from uh, photo repositories from federal agencies uh, that were associated with soil and water conservation. And, and you can see all the annotations that are included with each of these citations. Uh, we went through and, and uh, optimized uh, this book for screen readers. And we also went through uh, an editing and final formatting process. Uh, in editing, I would go through personally and edit each of these citations, uh, annotations and captions to maintain a consistent voice and consistent style throughout the document, uh, throughout the textbook. And then uh, 
we would send chapter by chapter uh, the entire book to a technical editor uh, who reviewed those chapters for grammar, spelling, and style. Uh, once the chapters were finalized, I would go through and do final formatting within Pressbooks, and we use Pressbooks to produce uh, the eventual PDF, uh, webbook, and ebook versions of this annotated bibliography, which were published by New Prairie Press, uh, which is an open textbook publisher through K the Kent State Library System. Uh, so, uh, for our teaching notes, uh, the, uh, the the context for this was I wanted to to really make this into a flipped classroom. And I wanted students to actually read the content prior to coming to class. So in doing so, or in, in the, the way I use this annotated bibliography is I have a running list of reading assignments along with due dates that the students can see and check, uh, check in with frequently so they know what they need to read and when. And, uh, and then I would, I would hold the students accountable for reading those assignments uh, through two ways. One is I would, uh, I, I, their participation in these discussions accounted for 15% of the overall grade in the course. So they knew it was it was clearly a, a priority of mine that they would actually contribute these, to these discussions. And also uh, during the discussions, I would call on students by name at random and I would ask them specific questions and in some cases provide them some guidance to kind of bring them into the conversation and get them speaking so that they could participate as part of the group. Uh, so that really worked well. We have a lot of great, effective discussions in, our, in this uh, class time. And another strategy that I did was I allowed the students to uh, lead their own discussions. And they would have to do that for two topics. One was conservation practices, the other government agencies and policies. And I would let the students choose a particular topic they were going to lead the discussion on. And they would go and, and use the annotated bibliography to, to research those topics. And, uh, and they would present that to the class, leading the discussion on it, uh, with everyone else having also read those, those, con those materials. And I would uh, provide comments to kind of fill in the gaps in case there was any important information that was omitted. And I would also outline the main points on the whiteboard uh, during this class discussion. Uh, this open annotated bibliography is also a great example of, of what's called OER enabled pedagogy. So open pedagogy is where students become content creators and teachers uh, during their own learning process. But taking that one step further, uh, when the content those students create becomes open educational resources, uh, that becomes uh, so-called OER enabled pedagogy. And so uh, I assigned the students uh, an annotated bibliography assignment where they were able to choose a topic on their own and based on that topic, develop an annotated bibliography uh, based on some guidelines uh, where they were developing and identifying all these resources that could be included in the, in the textbook. Uh, they would agree to in include this annotated bibliography in the textbook through a memorandum of understanding. And in the process, the students were taught how to search for relevant content, how to evaluate the credibility of that content, and how to cite those resources using Zotero. Uh, the, the biggest concern among the students was they were self-conscious about their writing abilities and they didn't want to be explicitly identified as the creators of sections within the book. So the way we worked around this was through both the editing process, uh, but also uh, the students, instead of being identified at their specific section within the chapter, they were identified as chapter co-authors among a group of students, as well as myself, uh, for an entire chapter rather than a, spe a specific section. Uh, in addition, I would go through and edit their annotated bibliographies myself to maintain a consistent voice, and then we'd have a technical editor uh, improve the grammar and spelling and so on. Uh, so all in all, these ended up being uh, well-written annotations, and, uh, and, and the students were able to also include a chapter in a textbook that they were able to cite on their, uh, on their resumes as a, a product from their education. Some conclusions uh, from this uh, from this case study: uh, soil and water conservation and annotated bibliography is a model for open and alternative textbook development. It's also a great example of OER-enabled pedagogy. Um, in general, open annotated bibliographies are a great way to engage students. It's a useful strategy for disciplines that have a lot of free online resources, and it also allows the use of copyrighted materials in the development of open textbooks. I want to acknowledge my funding source, the KSA Open and Alternative Textbook Initiative, the KSA Open Textbook Fee, and acknowledge all the help I received from the great librarians uh, and the K-State library system. Thank you.